Okay, peeps, welcome back. So today we're going to be going over the Grayscale Trusts and how Google and Tesla earnings just smashed the Grayscale Trusts into the floor. So with that being said, let's get it. Now, I'm not trying to trigger anybody by saying that the Grayscale Trusts are getting smashed into the floor, but that is kind of more or less what's happening. So you guys can see on the uh, trading view watch list that we have here of all the Grayscale Trusts, the lowest drawdown is 1%, which is ETH, but that's a that's an ETF now, so that doesn't really count. So if we go with the lowest drawdown at GSOL 2% and the biggest drawdown is GLIV at 26%, uh, those are some pretty huge pullbacks. So 2%, not so much, but when you get like 5, 10 plus percent, that's uh, pretty large. So there's a couple other things I want to mention here before we get into the actual charts. Uh, so you can see the native crypto... Um, positions that we are looking at are up for the most part. Again, the spot Ether ETFs have already started trading. The Nashville Bitcoin conference is tomorrow and Trump will be there. And I suspect he's going to say something very bullish for the markets that are probably going to cause the markets to rip to the moon. We'll just have to wait and see on that. But uh, that is what I am expecting to happen. So you can see that the native crypto space has more or less held its ground. Uh, Bitcoin's even moving up a little bit along with some of the alts. It's kind of a mixed bag, but it's still doing better than the um, grayscale trust. But, you know, you can look at the grayscale trust being down as one of two ways. Either, oh my God, everything's going to zero or it's just another dip buying opportunity for the eventual rip that's going to come towards the end of the year. Again, is there a guarantee that there's going to be a rip at the end of the year? No. But based on cycle timing and the way crypto works, generally speaking, over the course of history, Bitcoin doesn't usually go to all-time highs until around the end of the having year. That's, that's what we've seen. That's what we saw in the 2017 bull run. Um, I mean, it wasn't exactly like that, but that's pretty much more or less how it works. Bitcoin doesn't usually go as parabolic until the end of the having year. Uh, we saw something very similar in... Um, 2017. I'll just go over that with you guys now so we we can take a look at it. So I wasn't actually going to do Bitcoin on this video, but just to show you so you guys can really gain some perspective here. So 2020 having year, okay. Having was in May of 2020. You guys can see we pushed up into the end of the having year and then after the end of the having year kind of blasted off to the moon. And then going back to 2017, um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the Bitcoin having back then was in 2016, I want to say. Uh, so 2016. And you guys can see that, well, basically, if I pull back here a little bit in time, you can see the previous top here. Uh, we kind of get towards the end of 2016. You can see this thing's ramping up at the end of the having year and boom, we push up to the all time highs get a pullback into the start of the following year after the Bitcoin having year. And then that's when Bitcoin breaks to new all time highs. So that's what I wanted to show you guys on Bitcoin. So the timing, I mean, the, the cycle theory does actually support Bitcoin not going to new all time highs until the end of the year. Um, now, in terms of the indices, I think this is important to cover as well. So we actually usually don't talk about this with you all until basically the start of the month or roughly about the end of the month but i did want to show you guys this just to show you what's going on here so stocks are dumping which means because there is some level of correlation between stocks and crypto this is important to know okay so i suspect we're probably going to get some kind of several week dump into this channel which we're getting pretty close to hitting the bottom of and then we're going to rip to the moon okay I do suspect that's going to happen on the S&P 500. This is the golden standard golden standard that we usually use. Now, if it gets below this level then or below this bottom trend line, then obviously that would be concerning. You guys can see we're getting pretty close to oversold on the four hourly time frame and we are oversold on the one hourly time frame. But there's actually some correlation here between the different indexes. So we have these set up a little bit differently. So you can see S&P is almost at the bottom of his channel. NASDAQ still would have to come down quite a bit to get to the bottom of his channel. But, you know, this sell off really shouldn't surprise anybody. So about 3.7 percent. Reason I say that is because it's July of 2024. When was the last time we saw a massive sell off? July of 2023. 
into basically about October of 2023. So it really shouldn't shock anybody. Literally to the month, we're getting this sell-off. Um, so, you know, it's just another dip buying opportunity. Uh, dividend paying stocks have an inverse correlation. You know, the higher the price, the lower you, the yield, the lower the price, the higher the yield. That's the way it works. So um, how you guys want to see that is up to you. Russell's still bullish. Of course, um, you know, as the Fed cuts rates, a lot of these smaller cap companies will be able to borrow at cheaper rates, which is good for business. Uh, Russell, or the Dow Jones is getting ready to hit the bottom of this channel. You guys can see the top of this channel is absolutely insane. So in my opinion, um, I could be wrong about this, but I think the pullback that we're getting uh, is going to be relatively short-lived. I don't think it's going to last much longer. So LTCN. All right. So there is a pullback here. Um, that's not surprising. Once again, the technicals show that this is a resistance level. It was major resistance. It was actually a control zone for the bears during the bear market. As you guys can see, it capitulated massively from that point uh, all the way down to the bear market lows. So if we can get above this level, I would say that it's pretty much clear skies after that. As of right now, support still 18 to, I would say, pretty much anywhere up until this uh, resistance level converges with this trend line. So I know it goes out of ways, but it could take this long for this to pop off. Again, you guys got to understand LTCN and BCHG are oscillators to Bitcoin. That means they're likely not going to move until Bitcoin moves. Okay. The spot ETH ETFs just got approved. The spotlight's probably going to be on them for a while. Um, Trump could come out and change that tomorrow, but the reality is the cycle timing just doesn't support Bitcoin going to new all-time highs, like really blasting off to the moon and these blasting off to the moon until about the end of the year. So, um, I would be looking at anywhere from 17 to about $23 as support here. Uh, the resistance converges eventually with the support, but not until much, much later on towards the end of the year. If I were actually to do this exact, um, and it's, I mean, it's not going to be perfect, but you guys, you guys will see here what I'm talking about. So that would pretty much be exactly the converging point of the apex. You guys can see it literally meets at the end of the year, which is in theory, the time roughly Bitcoin should be going to new all time highs. And this would be an ascending triangle pattern if the price action was strictly in between the two. Uh, so that's also bullish. But resistance here is going to be roughly about 24 to 27. Uh, we're looking at $54 on the swing high. And then above and beyond that, for those of you that are new to the channel, um, for those of you guys that have been around for a while, you already know what the deal is. But um, for people that are new to the channel, above and beyond that price, we're looking at 75, 100 to 135, roughly about three to 400, and then 510 before eventually breaking to price discovery. So if I do the measure move from the pullback zone to the top of resistance, 34% move, and then all the way up to this swing high, it then becomes 170%. So BCHG, you can notice on the histogram on the MACD that they are starting to turn that lighter shade of red and kind of move up. That's a potential early sign of a bullish reversal. So BCHG caught up in this uh, resistance here. Again, there's a big fat control bar here. So until we get above this zone, likely the bears are going to try to hold it down because that's what they did during the bear market. Um, and then it obviously went down massively from that point. So as of right now, it's still say support's going to be down here, 670 to 760, uh, 1030 to 1265 on resistance and then 18 to $20 and 20, $24 respectively. So the pullback, if it does happen from the current price to the, the support zone, 35% move. However, from support to resistance, 80% and then to the top layer, 181% and 235% respectively. Uh, so we bought these on Fidelity, just so you all know. Um, because the Fed funds rate is still at all time highs, which I suspect is coming to an end shortly, which means the savings interest rates are going to drop when the Fed cuts rates. But until that happens, uh, the Fidelity SPACs money market fund is paying roughly about 5% on cash just sitting in your account. So that's something to think about if you guys are waiting for a dip buying opportunity. Um, again, I'm not suggesting anything. You guys are free to do what you want to with your own money. So um, HSN. 
this is still stuck in between this falling wedge. So support as of right now, 375 to 420. Resistance is basically the top of the wedge, which if it gets to the top of the wedge, it's likely just going to break out because it's it's supposed to break out anyways. That's the high probability scenario here. Um, but 690 to about $8 and then 10 and a half respectively all the way up to the swing high. So from support, just to get back to the top of the wedge is about 68%, which also converges with the bottom of resistance. And then you have roughly about 100% and 160% respectively. ETCG, so this one does actually look like it's going a little bit lower. Uh, whether it closes lower than this candle right here on the week, uh, that remains to be seen. So if we get a candle close lower than this candle close, which obviously this, that candle that would be lower would be this week, uh, then likely it will come back down here to this support at 870 to about 980. Uh, just to give you an idea of how big that drop would be, roughly about 19%. Um, again, this is crypto, anything's possible. Okay, it could just zoom straight back up. Again, the spot Ether ETFs are trading, so I suspect e e ETH Classic and ETCG will go up with it. Uh, with Ethereum, I mean, so from the current support to resistance up here is 68% to the swing high 106% and then 113% respectively uh, but beyond that level. So you have on resistance 13 to 1580 and then you have, uh, let's see, 1760 to about $20 on ETCG. ETH E, we're not going to go over that um, because again, it's a spot Ether ETF. Uh, we will start, we will actually, now that those are trading, we will start doing a little bit more TA on uh, the actual Ethereum price. Um, I'll just tell you guys this on Ethereum right now, okay? The macro support and resistance is 2,500 to 2,720, and then you have 3,530 to 4,000. Um, I'm expecting a couple weeks of pullback in ETH and then maybe a big launch from that point. Uh, that would just make perfect sense to me because, again, that's exactly what we saw with these spot Bitcoin ETFs. They pulled back and then they launched to new all-time highs. So Phil G, this thing tried to break out, got pushed back down. So, um, I mean, if we get below these lows at 70, I suspect it's going to come back down to 37 to 40. And then, which is that support down there? And then the swing high up here is at $400. So just to go from the current price to the swing high is a massive move. 502% gain. And then from the support zone down there to the swing high, 864%. GBAT still sitting at support, uh, still getting ready to make a move. In, well, I mean, it should theoretically make a move um, out of the coiling apex of this move. Usually these things make a move about 75% of the way. Um, so I'm not sure why it hasn't made a move yet, but I'm expecting one of these days it's going to make a move. Uh, it did right here, as you guys can see. So we got this little descending it's kind of a descending triangle pattern but it actually broke bullish again if the price action is above the emas even though this is a bearish pattern i expect it to break out bullish uh, in this case it's not above the emas but it could always change so support on gbat eight dollars to ten dollars and then the swing high is up here at 32 so just to go from the current price to the swing high is a 261% move. GLIV, this is the one that had the biggest loser here. So it tried to break out. Couldn't break out, unfortunately, because the markets are dumping, um, which I believe is based on Tesla and Google earnings. I looked a little bit into, I looked a little bit into that um, when I had time to do so. And to be honest, I think it's kind of overblown. Uh, I think... I think markets are just overreacting. That's what markets do. Um, people that participate in markets are notorious for overreacting to either overly bullish or bearish news. They kind of tend to blow it out of proportions. Uh, I will say this about these Mag7 companies. I'm not worried about it. They have plenty of cash flow and cash on hand to where they could probably survive multiple recessions if they wanted to, maybe with the exception of Tesla. But Tesla is more of a future tech company, so uh, we're more, more bullish on that, not necessarily because of their cash strength, but because of their innovation. So um, GLIV, if it gets below these lows, which it looks like it might, uh, I suspect it's going to come back down to support. So roughly about 12 to $15 here, and then the swing high is all the way up here at 80 
So the measured move on that would be about 490%. G-Link, uh, it came back down to support finally, but uh, personally, if I was going to buy this, um, assuming I was going to buy it, I'd want to pick it up as close to the bottom of the support as possible. Uh, and that's at $66. So you have basically 66 to 84 or basically just round it up and call it 65 to 85. Swing high is all the way up here at 220. Just from the current price of the swing high is a 157% move. However, if you manage to snag yourself a, a position trade at the bottom here, all the way up to the swing high, then becomes 222%. GSOL, uh, this thing is holding up nicely. I suspect it's going to continue to do so on the rumors of a spot Solana ETF. We'll just have to um, wait to hear about that. Again, I wouldn't touch this thing right now personally um, because the risk is too high. If I was going to get in, I sh probably should have got in back here somewhere. 66% uh, drop is a large drop, and this is crypto. Anything can happen, so... Uh, I will just simply say that that's, that's what I would do if I was going to buy Solana. So 167 to 200 and then 580 all the way up there at the highs. That move would then become 223%. Once more, I'll give you guys the Fibonacci retracement level here just as an added bonus in case it does break to all-time highs. Uh, 825 to about 1240 is what you'd be looking at. Again, I suspect that if the spot Solana ETF does actually get approved, we probably will see those Fibonacci levels get hit. The all-time highs probably will be broken. So GXLM, um, again, the candles are well below the EMAs, below this trend line. I'm looking at 25 bucks as support, and then the swing high up here at 70. Resistance is going to be 53 to about 59. So the measure move up to resistance, 132%, and then all the way up to the swing high is 174%. And keep in mind, these, these smaller measured moves that we're talking about, these are just short-term moves, okay? If you guys are holding like for the next 12, well, I'll say the next 12 to 15 months, somewhere in there, kind of towards the end of the post-having year, which is usually when crypto tops out, the moves will, in my opinion, they'll be probably much larger than this, okay? I'm just showing you guys some stuff in the immediate short term. So um, mana... This one's still sitting on support, so unless it gets a break of support, I'm just going to go ahead and say that this support is going to hold. So $17.50 to about $20 on support, and then the swing high all the way up here at $70. So from support to the swing high, 272% move. Again, this is literally sitting right at the bottom of support. It's a golden buying opportunity, in my opinion. If it gets below that, then the next level would be... Uh, just shy of $11. So Zcash, um, retesting support, typical is a typical flip zone move. That's what we would want to see uh, on the charts. So you can see it, it didn't touch it perfectly, but this was support before, kind of got held down as resistance here, tried to get up here, couldn't get up here, couldn't get up here, uh, tried to get held down a third time before it broke out and then it became support. So that's what we want to look for for a bull trend. Um, so support currently 440 to 510, $8 to roughly about 960 on the resistance and 10 and a quarter all the way up at the swing high. So from the current price to the top of resistance here at 93% and then 106% respectively, if you manage to snag it down at the bottom of support, it then becomes 118% to 133%. So anyways, hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see y'all later. Peace.